Spinal cord injury, examination and evaluation of the patient. Here is a scenario. A patient was involved in a motor vehicle accident and the patient is unable to move all four extremities. So we start the examination with applying the ABCs for trauma patients. Since the patient cannot move the extremities, then we examine the patient for a spinal cord injury. And the first question we ask, is the patient in a spinal shock? Spinal shock means the patient does not have bulbocavernosus reflex. The patient will have flaccid paralysis and no bulbocavernosus reflex. That spinal shock will take about 48 hours and we cannot tell the prognosis of the patient until that reflex comes back. Then we decide if the patient is complete or incomplete. You decide that when the bulbocavernosus is back, that means it is the end of the spinal shock. And complete means no motor or sensory below the level of the lesion and no sacral is sparing. Incomplete means the bulbocavernosus is back and there is sacral sparing. There is perianal sensation or rectal tone. Check out my other video about the bulbocavernosus reflex and the spinal shock. Then, after that, you try to see what is the functional level. The lowest segment with bilaterally intact sensation or anti-gravity muscle function and strength, like three or more bilaterally, while the segment above is normal. We need to determine the Asia impairment scale. It goes from complete to normal, A, B, C, D, E. The A is complete, no motor, no sensory, and no sacral sparing. The Asia impairment scale is dealing with a spinal cord injury, is not dealing with a college degree. So if you are in college, you get A, you're great. But in a spinal cord injury, if you get A, it is not great. It is bad. The spine is injured bad. A is bad. Complete. B is incomplete. There is no motor function, but there is some sensory or there is sacral sparing. So the B and C and D are incomplete. B, you have some sacral sparing, but there's no motor, but there's some sensory sparing. C is incomplete. Incomplete motor. More than 50% of the muscle group has grade less than 3 over 5. Patient cannot raise arms or legs. D, it's not bad. In college, D is bad. In a spinal cord injury, D is not bad. So more than 50% of the muscle groups have three over five or more. The patient can raise the arms and the legs. E is normal, normal motor and sensory function. When we talk about incomplete, we talk about a spinal cord injury with some neurological function distal to the injury. But in general, we talk about sacral sparing, the rectal tone, and the preanal sensation. So if the sacral sparing is positive, the patient is incomplete. If the sacral sparing is negative, the patient is complete. There are four types of incomplete. The brown C card, the central cord, the anterior cord, and the posterior cord. 
Central cord syndrome is the most common type, and you can see it in hyperextension injuries. You can see it in older patients. The anterior cord got a very poor prognosis. Usually it is vascular. The brown C cord is hemisection of the spinal cord. It got a good prognosis. Loss of ipsilateral motor and contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensation. Posterior cord is rare and is associated with loss of proprioception, deep touch, and vibration. What is neurogenic shock? The neurogenic shock is hypotension and bradycardia due to loss of the sympathetic tone to the heart and widespread vasodilatation with decreased systemic vascular resistance to the descending sympathetic system. You need careful fluid management. You may need swelling GANS monitoring and vasopressors to treat the hypotension. Hypotension and tachycardia is hypovolemic shock. Hypotension and bradycardia is neurogenic shock. How about the autonomic dysreflexia? It occurs in complete spinal cord injury due to uncontrolled sympathetic output, I meaning the sympathetic system is overcharged in activity. It's usually associated with certain triggers, usually unchecked visceral stimulation, such as fecal impaction or the fully catheter is kinked or plugged. It occurs in patient with a spinal cord injury above T6. It can be fatal. You will get headache, agitation, severe hypertension, and sweating. So check for fecal impaction and check the fully catheter for a kink or obstruction. You may want to give antihypertensives and atropine. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.